one of the best cold weather meals ever, a classic grilled cheese sandwich that you can dip into some homemade tomato soup. You'd want to get the soup on first, but I have a feeling a lot of you are here for the sandwich, so let's just start with that. To me, a classic grilled cheese just has three ingredients, fluffy white factory-made pre-sliced sandwich bread, American cheese, referred to abroad as processed cheese or cheese slices, and a large quantity of softened butter. That's it. Either butter at room temperature, or you can throw cold butter into a microwave at low power, just give it 10 or 20 seconds, pull it out, flip it around, another quick hit, and there we go. Not melted, but easily slathered onto both slices of bread. An obscene amount is called for. When it hits the pan, the outer layer of the butter will make the bread toast up all brown and crispy, while the inner layer of the butter will just kind of melt into the interior of the bread where it won't brown. It'll stay sweet. It's a magical combination. Any pan is fine, but nonstick is foolproof. It's on medium heat. First slice goes in, butter side down. On goes two slices of cheddar and or Colby cheese ground up and reconstituted with vegetable oil and emulsifying salts, a.k.a. American cheese. And my secret fourth ingredient, which is just a little dusting of garlic powder. I'm a fan of garlic powder, and this is perhaps my favorite deployment of it. Second slice of bread goes on, better side up, and the crucial step, cover it. A lid is great if you have one, but foil is fine, and it doesn't have to be an airtight seal, just enough to retain some steam in there. The steam is what will melt the cheese. Just be sure to check on it often. Those processed sandwich breads are full of sugar and can burn in a flash. I do like mine just on the edge of burning before I flip. Quite dark and crispy. Don't worry if the cheese still isn't looking terribly melty. Cover it up. The steam will melt it by the time side two is brown. I often like to give it a few final flips uncovered just to get both sides hot and crispy. Look at that cheese. Nothing melts like processed cheese slices. They make those for a reason. Unnaturally smooth, gooey cheese. Now, a lot of people maintain that mayonnaise, not softened butter, is the best thing to slather on your bread. It's certainly more convenient. You don't have to warm it up first. If you like the mayo method, I respect your choices, but I am not a fan. Yes, it seems to result in a crispier crust. I'm not sure why. It might be the lower water content compared to butter. It might be the egg protein in it. I don't know. I just know that I think the flavor is very inferior to butter. If you use low heat and grill it until just golden, the mayo kind of tastes like nothing. If you grill it until dark, it develops this awful fishy flavor. I couldn't tell you why. Here, Lauren has never had the mayo version. Let's give her a blind taste test. Grilled cheese should always be cut in triangles. It's the law. I like the triangles too, but I think you should cut yours however you like it. That's the butter version she's trying, though she doesn't know it. Now here's the mayo version. I don't know why it seems to have a seafood flavor. Am I just like conjuring up tuna salad? Uh. Again, lots of people love the mayo trick. If you're curious about it, I say try it. Just maybe don't cook it as brown as you might with the butter version. That's the version that gets me thinking about my mom making lunch on a snow day. I would eat it with my puffy gloves and coat drying over the electric heater behind my chair at the kitchen table. I will love that sandwich always. But a slightly more sophisticated grilled cheese I like sometimes would use rye bread. Rye bread goes particularly well with tomato soup, butter it up. In it goes, and I'll put on a slice of real sharp cheddar and a slice of Swiss. A little garlic powder, again, just gives it so much more depth, and another piece on, butter side up. Yeah, you could just melt a ton of butter into the pan and then drop the dry sandwich into that. The bread would absorb it, but you'd probably end up wasting more butter, and the butter would brown pretty heavily. I like having that fresh, sweet butter taste up inside the bread in addition to the browned crust. If you're using real cheese and you want it to be gooey, put a little water in the pan, half halfway through and seal with a tight lid. It won't be gooey like the processed stuff, but a good amount of steam will help the cheese pull more like that. It makes it stretchy. And grilled cheese is just as easy as that. As easy as making dinner with the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. Let's thank them before we make the soup. Lauren's been making all kinds of things since we signed up for America's number one meal kit delivery service. It's really helped me build my confidence with cooking. I used to always be kind of panicked when I was cooking and um, following the instructions and having all you know the pictures, you can't mess it up. And doing that enough, I feel like I've gotten just better overall. Plus, the HelloFresh recipes are tasty. We usually get the vegetarian plan. It just nudges us to eat meatless more often. But there's meaty plans, locale plans, pescatarian, lots of options. And you can change your plan, put deliveries on hold, whatever. Something I like is you end up wasting a lot less food because you're not going to the grocery store and buying full boxes of each of these ingredients. They just send you what you need. If you want to try it, go to HelloFresh.com and use code 10 Ragusia to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. 10 free 
free meals with my link and code in the description. Thanks, HelloFresh. Now, homemade tomato soup. It's the easiest thing ever. Clank up an onion. We're going to puree this later, so precision cutting is moot here. You don't have to do this, but I like fennel bulb in tomato soup. If you plan to strain the soup later, you can chop up the stalks and put them in, but if you're going to have it chunky style, I recommend only using the bulb. The stalks have little fibers in them that kind of get stuck in your throat if you don't strain them out. I'm just shaving this kind of fine so it'll cook in the same time as the onion. Nice, subtle licorice flavor there. You could use oil, but I like to use butter. You could use a quarter this much butter, but I think a ton of butter really helps tomato soup taste like a soup and not just a bowl of tomato sauce. In goes the onion and fennel on medium heat. I just want to give these a head start without browning anything. I'll grind in some pepper and highly optional, some celery seeds. I love that flavor with the tomatoes and fennel. And if you get the seeds in early, they'll soften by the time you eat. Last thing, maybe a quarter cup of flour, 30 grams, stir that into the butter to make a roux. That'll give the soup a nice velvety texture. Again, we're going to puree it, so don't worry about lumps. Before anything browns, in goes the tomatoes and their juice. One of the advantages of making your own tomato soup instead of eating the canned stuff is you can use better tomatoes. Garden tomatoes in the summer or really high quality canned ones in the winter. These ones from California are really top notch. Hashtag not an ad. I've got two 28 ounce cans in there and if you've got whole tomatoes, you could just let them cook and break apart naturally, but you can't accelerate things with a potato masher. This will just help them cook quicker. And you could use more tomatoes, but again, my goal is to make it taste like tomato soup instead of tomato sauce. And I find it helps on that score to keep the proportion of non-tomato ingredients relatively high. A lot of people put in a bunch of chicken or veggie stock now. You could do that. I tend to prefer plain water in vegetable soups, but you know, it's been a while. Like a glass of white wine. This will certainly need more moisture before we're done, but you can always add. You can't subtract. So I generally start soups on the dry side and then add water at the end to taste. I'll turn the heat down just to let that simmer for maybe an hour tops. Scrape the bottom every now and then so nothing sticks and burns. Meanwhile, for garnish, I'm going to grab a little pot and make some quick chili oil. You can buy it, but it's easy to make. I'll just dump in some dried chili flakes into a little olive oil. You could use way more than that if you want it super spicy. And I'll put in a crushed garlic clove. The garlic tastes good, and the water in it serves as a thermometer. If it's just barely sizzling, that means that you've got enough heat to infuse the oil without creating any burned flavors. I'll just let that infuse on low heat while the soup cooks. You'll see why. Here we are like 40 minutes later, and it's time to puree this. I love immersion blenders so much. So much less work than getting out a food processor, transferring the soup over, and then cleaning it after. Plus, this gives you more control. You don't have to blitz this totally smooth if you don't want to. I'll just run that under the faucet and put it away. Time to give this a taste. It needs a ton of salt and some water, too thick for me. And I do wish it was a little more tomato-y, so I'll squeeze in some tomato paste. A lot of people add some sugar at this stage if the tomatoes aren't naturally sweet enough. These are. Now, I really like that kind of crude texture. However, if you want to, you can strain this, sieve over a bowl, and then just put in only as much as you can work with at a time. You just take a stiff spoon and grind the soup into the sieve. It takes a minute. A food mill would perform this function a little more efficiently, but a sieve and a spoon works too. And pretty soon you'll just have a ball of plant fibers in the sieve. Underneath you'll have the super smooth texture that you might be familiar with from the canned tomato soups. I like both textures. What I don't like about any pureed soup is its homogeneity. It's like baby food. Every bite is exactly the same. That's what the chili oil fixes. You spoon that on and it just floats at the top and creates some nice variety as you eat. You can dose it onto each spoonful however you like. Plus, you can also pick some of the fronds off of that fennel, chop them up and scatter those on too. Very nice. And then you can just dip the corner of that sandwich in there. That's why I like the triangle shape. An unbeatable cold weather combination. That recipe makes a lot of soup. Just freeze the rest and save it for a snowy day. Now, excuse me, I have a date with that bit of crispy cheese there.